Because of the unprecedented demand, we proudly repeat last week's Joe Franklin interview with Miss Louise Rayner. tell you one thing there's a lot of it first let me say good morning happy friday a lot of uh, excitement generating here this morning in our memory lane studio because well first of all we're going to do a big segment with mrs rod serling on twilight zone that you know is of the moment speculative fiction sometimes known as science fiction the man from bartender magazine wants to name a drink after this program that'll be fun i want to do a segment on calligraphy which i guess means beautiful handwriting and a lot of surprises but i want to tell you that uh, through the courtesy of a very beautiful lady over there named Charlotte Chandler. A much honored lady is passing through New York City, and she is a uh, one-of-a-kind lady. She is a legendary lady with millions and millions of fans all over the world. She doesn't travel any talk show circuits, never. But uh, she dropped in to say hello. What do I have to say? We don't have any studio audience at all, but I want to ask my immediate crew, how do you feel about Louise Reiner? How do you feel about Louise? <laughs> That's my first standing ovation in 28 years. Thank you. <laughs> how, how have you been? Well, I have been very, very well. I'm very happy to be here for a very short time. And uh, New York is always fascinating to me. And it grows taller and taller and taller. And my neck hurts more and more and more as I look up at it. Big buildings. Uh, immensely, yes. Big buildings. And uh, it's a very exciting town. and. Uh, where we live now, on the border of Italy, in Switzerland, looking right into Italy, it is very, very beautiful up in the mountains, but uh, it is, of course, very much more quiet. Than here. Than here, yes. So um, I enjoy the life and, and the stimulation and the inspiration and, and the liveliness of the people and... Uh, uh, it's as though as, uh, there's an electricity in the air that, of course, uh, where we live, it is not. It's electricity when you walked into the studio, let me tell you. One of my friends brought me a picture. I've got to show it. It says here on the back, unlike any established Hollywood celebrity is Louise Reiner, the Viennese sensation now under contract to Metro Goldwyn May, a youthful elfin and of a rare beauty. Miss Reiner has won the plaudits of European critics and audiences for brilliant stage performances. In mature plays, you were about 12 years old, you were in mature plays, right? <laughs> her arrival in Hollywood has been hailed as the major event of any year. Preparations are underway for her camera debut. That's a gorgeous shot. You well, it's a lovely photo. Did you ever have any protege? Did you have anybody that, that, that was very young, maybe, that you encouraged ever to... Everybody sometimes talks about their protege. Did Louise Reiner ever have a protege? No, I did not, not in acting. Really didn't? No, 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 because it's a very fickle o occupation. It's a, a marvelous occupation because you live your life and you live it once more on a stage and you can bring out all kinds of facets that you might not be permitted to bring out in life but that you know about and that you feel. But I think it is, especially in our time, um, it has become a very um, commercial thing. Uh, I used to love, uh, wanted to be a great actress, uh, and um, then I felt it was very much show business with the emphasis on business, and it started frightening me, and uh, I kind of withdrew. I was wrong to have withdrawn, and I feel very, very 
guilty about it because when God provides you with uh, the means and, and uh, certain things, then you have a duty to give it out and not to have done so uh, is a very wrong thing. But um, then there come other considerations uh, that may uh, make you do the way I lived and uh, to be more in the background and to be more quiet. And uh, I've had a very full life maybe more full than if I had remained on, uh, on the stage or in films. I read this week, I'm sure that Louise Reiner read, as our audience out there read, that Ingrid Bergman announced that she retired completely, absolutely, from any form of acting. She will never act again. And, and of course, Greta Garbo phased out when she was still very much wanted and very much needed. And uh... Yeah, but I was 25 when I faded out. Right. I didn't fade out. No, I no. don't let that go by. No. No, but uh, I, when I stopped, when I stopped, I was very, very young. But uh, then I married and I lived very fully and, uh, and um, saw very much and uh, enjoyed uh, much. And of course, I also uh, suffered as much as any other human being But does. my point was, Ms. Reiner, at that point, when you were 25, did you officially announce in any formal way that you were just retiring from acting it. I definitely That did. was it. That wasn't oh, yes. that you just, uh, no. Yes, but I didn't retire then from acting. No, no. No, because I did stage plays and I did other things, but uh, uh, I didn't want to make, at the time, I didn't want to make films anymore. Because actors, I don't think, ever retire. They, I mean, even John Barrymore would come back from the grave if he, if he could sink his uh, dentures into a good role. You know what I'm saying? Well, you're quite right. If the role is good, but you just now yes. said, uh, let the act cameras act. Right. Uh, don't, you don't have to act. Well, uh, then you are superfluous. Then you're just uh, a machine. Uh, possibly, then, then, you know, then you can just take any pretty girl, and uh, that's sufficient. And of course, uh, that is. A, if, if you really have something in you, that is a very difficult thing, uh, thing to think, uh, that this is the right thing to do. Mm. Because I don't want to have the cameras act for me. If I do, anyway, the word acting uh, is a very dangerous word. If, if you give out and live what you're supposed to live, uh, you don't want to just be a piece of mechanism. I uh, told Miss Reiner before the show that the way movies are made today, they tell the actors and actresses, the director, who's the supreme commander, he says to the actor, you just stand and talk and let the camera do the acting. And Miss Reiner says, that's, that's a horrible way to make movies. But that's, that's the way they do it today. No, I don't. Well, I've been so. on the set. I've but seen you know, it. I, I'm sure that Jane Fonda and a lot of good actresses uh, work differently. They've I don't got think that. it is not not the camera. Now you were talking about Jane Fund. I want to tell you, a lot of people tell me today that you've got to have that inside connection, like a relative, to really get ahead in show business. Like a Henry Fonda, like a like a Bing Crosby. Like I don't a, believe that don't believe either. That. I don't believe that either. I think uh, if you really have a talent, uh, of course, many people uh, are gifted and and still don't get anywhere. Right. But um, I don't think that you have to have relatives or to go through anything as in former times. They used to say you have to uh, um, make love or have an affair with uh, the people uh, that uh, would place you into such position as you want to. I think it's all nonsense. At least it's never happened in my life. Never once. No. So when you write your book about the movies... I don't write my book. You will never expose the I moguls. I will never write my no book. No book and no I, exposure. No, I don't want to. Because no. everybody else, including starting with Shelley Winters, walked in I, here with know, their book. I know, I know, I know, I know, I know. No, I have painted, and I had a one-woman show in London. Really? Mm. My guest is Louise Reiner. And we are reminiscing. I want to ask Charlotte Chandler to join me in a couple of minutes. I think she might come in and just say hello, right? She's a yes, lady. of course. I hope she's coming. Miss Reiner is in town for a certain event, which I can't dare mention, because I think it only seats about 200 people, and there's about 2,000 already who want to get tickets. But uh, it'll be a special showing of one of your nostalgic pictures. Tell me, Miss Reiner. Yes. Uh, so far as uh, if somebody's parent is, I mean, Judy Garland or, or Danny Thomas or... Or, or somebody like that. It's got to help a little bit, though, I mean, regardless of... Uh... Well, I don't know. I don't know if this helps. Maybe it's a handicap. Uh, it, it, it can be also. You know, uh, I have a very, very beautiful daughter, 
And um, I think that maybe in her heart she would have liked to do something. She lives in California, and she, 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 but uh, she didn't make the grade therefore, you know. She did try for a while. I believe she did, right. yes, yes, yes. She's uh, yes. still out there. She's married out there. And happy. And very happy. She loves it. And you're happy. Oh, happy. Happy, happy, Who, who's happy, 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 I don't know what is, is Greta Is Greta Garbo happy or do you feel Greta Garbo is alone since you shared the MGM lot with Greta Garbo for a long time? It's a, it's kind of a... But you see, uh, the word happy is a very elusive thing. Right, right. Happy, what is happiness? If we all of us seriously think back in our lives and say, well, uh, when was I really on that peak that uh, is happy? Right. You know, you can count it. Not that many times. Not that. Now, many when you times. won two Academy, my, I, I mean, I don't go through this. Uh, I wasn't. I wasn't happy then. No, you weren't happy. No, then. no, because I didn't really, at the moment, at that moment, realize it. I was a working uh, girl. I, I, I was terribly involved in my work. I was always dissatisfied with everything I did. I always thought I should have done better. And uh, when I got these awards, it was really a, a very. Uh, more frightening affair, especially when I, uh, when I got it twice in succession, and I didn't really realize what it meant, and uh, uh, it uh, disturbed me in a way, uh, in the peace I needed uh, to calmly think through and give out what I wanted to give out, the onslaught from the outside, when you get such honors, become so big, that uh, it is a new thing that you have to practically fight. I once read about you by somebody who I found out never met you, never did any research about you, but so it must have been speculation that when Louise Reiner won two Academy Awards in a row for The Good Earth and for The Great Ziegfeld, this made you too fussy about your future scripts. No. And I, I never well, I mean, you know, they say about many, many actresses right. and actors yes. that they were fussy or this or that. Right. Uh, if... Uh, if you had the smallest uh, um, thoughts yourself, you right. know, it was very disturbing because you're supposed to be a piece of mechanics and then right. they have to be, you know, uh, so, but um, no, I don't think I was ever fussy. But you have known people who waited too long for the right script and then the parade would pass them by while they were, while they were too choosy, I think. That could happen in uh, some cases. They could be very, very particular. But not yes. you. I mean, you don't want to sell yourself, do right. you know? You want to do the beautiful things or the, the... I don't... When I say beautiful things, I don't mean just things of beauty, but whatever it is, but to put the guts and the life into it that gives something to other people. You don't just want to be paraded yourself. I didn't become an actress to be in this beautiful limelight. I became an actress to give, and that's my, all. My guest really gave, and if we can debunk one myth, they, they always write about, not always, but a lot of people say that you quit because the head of the studio always chased you around and stuff like that. And, and Nobody chased me no, around. That's Nobody great. chased me around. Mickey Rooney said the same thing here, that, that Judy Garland wasn't mistreated either. So it's nice when you when somebody... Nobody chased me around. Right. No. Whatever happened, uh, I think it happens to one because one uh, causes it. Right. Yes. Ms. Reiner, do you, uh, do you follow the Academy Awards now? Do you follow the movies at all nowadays, or not as much? Or well, what? if I hear that there's a good movie, I go very fast. Yes, I like seeing good movies. I don't follow it, uh, not to that extent, especially as uh, where I live. Uh, most of the movies, the American movies, are dubbed, and I hate dubbed movies because I think it's very, very important to have the voice of the... Of the uh, actor or artist, whoever it is, and um, uh, it's usually in Italian, and my Italian is not all that good, and so I don't really follow to that extent, but the moment I hear that uh, there's a good movie, I go, mm. and I see it. And where do you keep your two statuettes nowadays? Oh. <laughs> good place? Well, then... Fireplace? No. <laughs> no. Home? No. Well, they, 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 I have a little studio mm. where I work, and, and I have uh, whatever beautiful things and good things happen to me in my life, they're somewhere 
around that. One Oscar got lonely, that's why you got the other Oscar to sort of keep it company, yeah, right? Yeah, that's right. That's right. Probably, therefore. I don't know, really. I, I, um, I don't like showing off Oscars. I know that. I know you're, no. very, you're <laughs> very modest about that. No, I'm not modest. Uh, I like to live in, at the present and in, in the future. And uh, this is a part of one's past life, which is a wonderful thing. But uh, Charlotte told me that Miss Reiner doesn't care to reminisce. But how can we not? How can we not talk about those beautiful days? Let me show a couple of uh, stills from our uh, archives. Everybody talks about the good earth and. Uh, and the great Ziegfeld, and they should, but there were... Uh, how many movies did you make in Hollywood? Eight. Was eight. Well, what? I only made them there. Only in Hollywood. What do you want to say about Spencer Tracy and Big City? Look who got top billing, Louise Reiner over... What do you want to say about that movie, if anything? Well, I told you before that I never quite liked what I did, and mm. I don't think that I... I saw this film, my husband hadn't seen the film, and mm. it was given in, in England, and um, I didn't think it was, I was so hot. I thought she was no. spectacular. <laughs> Louise Reiner and Paula Goddard in dramatic school with a little part played by Lana Turner. Any recollection, Miss Reiner, of this Metro Goldwyn Mayer epic? Uh, well, only that it uh, uh, was at the time when I was yearning to get out of films. Mm. That's my main recollection. Produced by Mervyn Leroy. I know. You, you must say the nice things. I, I say the bad things. Right. It's terrible. You were just eager to break away. At the time, yes. It was my last film. These are some of the Hurel photographs, which are incredibly valuable. And uh, well, is, uh, n now I see them, and I'm always surprised that I looked like that. <laughs> I think you did more for the telephone in, uh, in, in the Great Siegfeld. In the Great Siegfeld than all the AT&T stock, uh, all the meetings in the world. You did a uh, big job on the phone. And uh, do you uh, plan to write something besides a book? Could, could you do poetry? Could you do paintings? A different kind of a book, maybe? No, I don't think it's necessary to, to always... Uh, it's, it's become a fad that every actor and every actress writes a book. And um, I don't think it's necessary to tell. If I would want to write a book, I would write to, about other people. I would prefer not to have to write about when myself. When they list all their lovers, who needs all that, right? <laughs> well, I don't know. <laughs> Maybe very interesting, but... Um, not for us. I, d I don't know. It depends. I, I'd rather... Uh, not speak too much about myself. And besides the changing world and changing theaters and changing movies, there's also changing uh, words. Uh, I mean, can, can, can some of that realism uh, be overdone, do you think, Miss Reiner, today? Some of the, uh, when you go to a show today or a movie today, you hear a lot of four-letter words that we didn't say. Uh, well, I, I don't think you have to use things like that. I don't think that you have to use four-letter words. I think there is an enormous vocabulary in every language. Mm. And uh, you can describe things uh, without using four-letter words. Mm. I mean, whoever wants to use four-letter words, fine, they're welcome, let them do it. I'm not a prude, but I don't, uh, myself, I don't think it would fit into my life. My guest, ladies and gentlemen, is one of the most honored actresses in the history of the movies in a brief career. More noise, more publicity, more... Uh, Academy Awards, more everything, a superstar before the word was invented. And I want to ask uh, Charlotte Chandler, who helped to synchronize today's appearance, if she'll join us for a brief episode following these words. Stay with us, please. I'm chatting with Louise Reiner, who is everybody's favorite actress. Mm -hmm. For floor lamps, Bar stools, brushes, rustoleum, shop Martin paint, and save. For accent tables, trays with rollers, Burma roll ups, director's chairs, shop Martin paint, and save. For floor tiles, Lady Martin wall covering window shades, entertainment centers, louver doors, chandeliers, porter service, carpeting, table lamps, multi guard, Persian rugs. All your home decorating needs, shop Martin paint, and save. Martin's Home Decorating Center, it ain't just paint. Not too long ago, a new and exciting restaurant offered a different taste in Italian seafood, Lenny's Clam Bar and Restaurant. 
Now Lenny's has added delicious pasta dishes and Italian specialties to the menu. Enjoy a good meal at reasonable prices. Visit one of the Lenny's in Howard Beach, Staten Island, Rockville Center, Huntington, Manhattan, Yonkers, Smithtown, West Babylon, Bayside, and East Meadow. And you still can enjoy Glass One and a Half. I was always obsessed by the idea of playing Joan of Arc. Ever since I was a young girl, I bought books about her, studied her. You have been listening to Ingrid Bergman talk about her role in the making of the Academy Award-winning movie, Joan of Arc. Please tune in for the rest of Miss Bergman's comments and Joan of Arc. It's the legendary story of the maiden who saved France. That's Ingrid Bergman in Joan of Arc. See Joan of Arc, Monday night at 9 o'clock. I just want to point out again, as best I can do it, and I want to get Miss Reiner. I'm chatting here with Louise Reiner. I'll be joined by Charlotte Chandler. Louise, Miss Reiner, there's, there's, there's got to be a big difference. Got to be a, a, a fine distinction, though, between between complete retirement and inactivity. And you. Good God, no! I could never be inactive. You. Yeah. I will be inactive. I hate. Right. To think of the time when I'm inactive, I will be underground. Right. Now, I hate to always talk about Greta Garbo, but but what I read where she saw herself... I know you love her. So, so, so uh, you said, what do I think about Greta Garbo? I think uh, it is a tragedy for a woman right. of such incredible beauty right. to ever get older. And that in itself is a tragedy. They say she saw herself in a movie in 1941, and she didn't like the way she looked, and just walked away because she didn't like the way she looked in that movie in 1941. Well, that I don't know, but uh, she was so incredibly beautiful. I think after Nefertiti in uh, old Egypt, uh, I think the most beautiful creature was, was Garbo. I was always fascinated by her beauty. And uh, you, of course, you're in a position, and even then you were, to, to be able to sit back and, and wait for some suitable uh, script. If you didn't like the stuff they were giving you, that was your prerogative. No, 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 no. I made eight films, one after the other, right. uh, in, in an enormous speed. I was only three years there mm. in Hollywood. Right. My whole career, film career, was three years. And, and uh, I made eight films, and you can imagine the enormous... Uh, uh, work that means. I mean, it was really one after the other. And uh, I had no chance at the time to say anything about what I wanted or did not want. But the time came when I felt that I'd rather n uh, not do anything uh, uh, unless I get a chance. And I am not a particularly big fighter. And uh, uh, so I was screwed, that's all. But you were, at that period, big box office. Yes. Charlotte, yes. this lady's name was always above the title and always above the male star. Okay. Charlotte Chandler is the author of Hello, I Must Be Going by Groucho Marx. Miss Chandler brought King Vidor to my studio about uh, six months ago, and this afternoon, uh, Louise, Louise Reiner. Reiner. And I don't know what to say. Wait, wait, uh, how can I be that lucky, right, Louise? Oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Charlotte, may we ask how you met this lady and how it's like to go into bakeries? And I, I know you've been around town with uh, Louise Reiner. A little bit on the, on the beginnings. Well, actually, I met her rather indirectly through Groucho. Really? Because uh, he talked a lot about her. Uh, you're one of the people he most admired because you had the nerve to stand up to Louis B. Mayer. And he was proud that he had to. And uh, so for that, and also because he loved George Gershwin so much, who was a great friend of yours. I remember when we first talked that you told me about George Gershwin yeah. taking you to see the Marx Brothers, only it was early and you didn't quite appreciate them yet. No, I didn't. Uh, no, and, and poor George Gershwin, didn't, he died really Young. very, very soon after I met him. But uh, we were very good friends. In a very short time, he would come to my house because I was, uh, had just come from Europe, and uh, he was yearning to write uh, what he called serious music. And he always felt that possibly uh, if he would come to my house, uh, he would uh, feel this European influence, on, and, um, and uh, he played a lot. Uh, and um, I listened a great deal to his music. You might have inspired Love Walked In? No, or? no, 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 I haven't inspired anything, no. I'm only fooling. No, 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 no. The, uh, the bakery experience you mentioned is, 
it's something that's such fun because uh, it's an example of what it's like when walk a star some, walks walk down strudel. the street. We went in to buy some, um, I don't even know what you call them. Something marvelous yes. in that door up on Madison Avenue. I think, I think it's called something like a kittel if anyone recognizes my pronunciation. <laughs> but it's kittel, <laughs> you know? <laughs> anyway, they're quite delicious. But it's a very big experience buying it with Louise because wherever you go into any store, people recognize her and it takes about an hour to get served. The smallest thing, after a while, you tend to give up. Right, you know, you it, isn't, it isn't quite yeah. an hour, but, but it uh, was quite amusing yeah, because this nice. dear woman, it was an old woman, she was so excited when we came in there and she said, you must talk to my sister. My sister doesn't talk. She doesn't talk to anybody. So I said, well, where's your sister? She said, oh, I don't know where she is. I will telephone her, but she must go to the telephone and talk her. She so called she, her on the phone. So she called her. <laughs> She said, hello, Flo. Oh, on the hello, telephone. Flo. It was terribly funny. <laughs> so I had to tell her, I said, hello, how are you, and, and so forth. And she talked back, so I said, well, she did talk, so the sister was very, very happy. But then it was terribly funny because uh, between Charlotte and me, we walked the street and we were eating all these marvelous things right on Madison Avenue. And I said to Charlotte, I must get more. I want to have more of that. So uh, I said, but I can't go back into this place. So I said to Charlotte, please go into that uh, store and, and get some more of it. And she went in and she didn't come out and she didn't come out and she didn't come out. And then she came out, her hair was practically ruffled. And she said, it was terrible because the woman now took me. And she said, do you know this is a friend of Louise Reiner? Do you? And so the, the, there was one lady in the store, she said, so what? So, but it was so terrible because they didn't let go of her. That's funny. I was a celebrity by reflection. <laughs> Ms. Ryan, I guess a third Academy Award for that performance. Let me tell you, that was, yes. that was a great rendition you just gave. And the original was extraordinary too, especially the phone call. I bet. Can I ask you one of those personal questions, very gauche, very corny, at, at the height of your movie fame, Louis, yeah. Ryan, when you were really packing them in and making a lot of money for the stockholders and for the Louis B. Mayer uh, people. What was your salary? I mean, today we hear about eight million dollars a movie, and yeah, yeah. Are we allowed to ask? Yes, you're allowed to ask. <laughs> I'm sure that Charlotte told you that before. No, never. No, I actually, got two hundred dollars a week, and uh, I then they told me that if I'm a nice girl or whatever they called it, uh, they would give me a bonus, and then they uh, gave me seven hundred dollars on top of it. And then the moment uh, I said, I don't think I'm good in this scene, or I don't think this is very good, or I don't think we should do that, and so, then they said, they took the bonus away. So I told them, look, when I was a child and they gave me a doll, it was my doll, I wanted it. And when they took it away, I didn't want to have the doll anymore. Take your blasted $700. I'm very rich with $200 a month, a week. And, uh, uh, and that was it. 200 a week. Yes. Well, later on I got a little more, but it was mainly $200 a week. Charlotte, that's absolutely incredible. Well, I just didn't care. That was, you see, I, I love money like everybody else. I love to buy beautiful things. I love to have this feeling, but I always felt rich. When I was, when I was a young actress uh, of, of 16, I started 16, 16, 17, we would stand in Vienna in a queue to get one third of the salary that uh, we were supposed to get. And then we would all sit together and we discuss marvelous things and the place we were going to do and what we wanted to do in life. And that fulfilled one. And it wasn't money. And, and uh, uh, I know money is terribly important. And I love money. I don't want to give a wrong impression of uh, being holier than thou. No, I think money is terribly important. But I'd rather have no money in my freedom uh, or the freedom I need and want than to get a lot of money and sell myself. I wouldn't do that. It always seemed being rich is feeling rich. Yes. It's and if you feel rich, I've that's I've always great kept thing. myself clean in that direction. I never, I never, I wouldn't uh, marry a man who had a lot of money because he had a lot of money. I married for love, nothing else. How many I times, was Rainer? I was married two times. Right. I, I am married now, 36 years right. uh, to the same man, and I was married to uh, somebody else before, three years, 
uh, and it was were both times married marriages of of love. Was the first man a Hollywood uh, person? No, you know who it was. Was Clifford Odette? Clifford Odette. It just yeah. skipped my mind. Right, yeah. Clifford Odette. Yeah. He was a, a very very uh, extraordinary, wonderful playwright. Uh, yeah. And man. Uh, yes, he was extraordinary. It was too difficult for me because I was too young at the time to handle a man of, of, of such substance plus a world career, so it kind of broke me. Did he ever help you with your financial affairs at that point? Or was he no. Not? No. Because I've chatted here with people like Betty Hutton and people who used to make 12000 a week, and they wound up penniless because they said that... And Doris Day, too. They said their husbands uh, mismanaged their... Uh, no, nobody mismanaged. Uh, this no, was two hundred dollars no. a week. So, <laughs> no. how much could you go wrong with two hundred dollars? No, 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 no. Well, I got two hundred dollars a week and a bonus, and then later on I got a bit more. But uh, not. I don't really remember anymore. Very much more. Mm. I, I don't remember very. How about Veronica Lake made all that money and wound up as a waitress in a, in a hotel downtown here? I guess uh, you need uh, you need management, right, Louise? Besides. Uh, well, I I don't think I've ever had management at no. all, right. and I, I I I don't know why I lived the way I lived. I lived clean, wonderful, good. I'm happy. I ha no, I'm happy. This is an idiot word. I'm contented. I have a very beautiful house in uh, in uh, in an old Roman village. Mm. An extraordinary little village with cobbled stones and marvelous uh, round, marvelous houses and, and uh, practically prehistoric, but they're not prehistoric. But uh, the village where we live is pre-Roman and uh, it's, it's, not an, uh, it's an, uh, a very beautiful new house, it's not an old house. And below us is a fishing village, which is also an ancient village, and people come from all over to see it, and it is very beautiful. And I walk, and I walk, I walk in beauty. Yes, I do. Uh, Charlotte, we're going over to see that house. Anybody well, she's you? invited. Right. Yeah, how about how about how about next time you got to get me Deanna Durbin? She's also uh, far away. And remember Deanna Durbin? You yes, of me? course I do. Right. That's. Yes. Uh, I wanted Louise Reiner. Deanna Durbin and Charlie Chaplin. I wanted those three. And, and Greta Garbo. And, well, well, we'll definitely get Greta Garbo. We, yes. we meet in the street and we chat. <laughs> but uh, Chaplin, we can never get. But uh, I'm Poor sure. Poor Chaplin, yes. You knew him? Well, of course, very well. Of course, I knew Chaplin. And Paul Muni must have been a nice man to work with, uh, right? Yes, he was a lovely man. Did he help you? Or did he want the best lines? <laughs> he had a difficult time because, with me, because I. It was practically all the time silent, mm. and my very silence stole the picture. It's very well put. That's true. That's true. It's very true. You know, and and that you can't fight silence. No. Many times while he was talking, the camera was on That's you. That's right. Many times, because your eyes were very penetrating. That's. I don't know what it was, but it was. Uh, I don't think it it was uh, a very happy thing for him. Were you aware when he was talking that the camera, that the director was shooting no, you? No, no, You didn't no, know that? No. When I, when I uh, am in a part, I'm not aware of anything. Mm -hmm. I, I'm aware only of the character that I would like to, to, to show and, and to portrait. I, I'm not aware of outer things. Ladies and gentlemen, a busy and a great and a beautiful lady, I just want to say again that the best is yet to come for Louise Reiner. Right, Charlotte? <laughs> yes, I believe so. If you don't do, if you don't, she doesn't want to do a book, but you got to persuade Miss Reiner to do a book. Please. <laughs> or something. Got to. Got to do a book. Miss Reiner, whenever you're in town, be Thank with me. You. Thank you. Thank you very, very much. Fabulous Thank lady. You. Get my Thank kiss. Mmm. <laughs> And we thank shall return you. following these words, my friends, as we thank Louise Reiner and Charlotte Chandler. They are the best of the best, and quality is always in style. Save today at Martin Paint's inflation.